my lead off header. Uh, today's uh, and this week's Corona question is, which person living or dead has inspired you the most in your personal or professional life? Yeah, so the first person that always comes to mind um, is my uncle, Michael Beatty, and he passed away when I was 23, but he is my entrepreneurial role model. He um, he founded a new home construction company in our small town here in, in Indiana in the late 70s or so. And because of the way he ran his company, when the economy was crashing in the early 80s, um, and he built new homes and the economy is crashing, he didn't have to lay off a single person, which I think is unbelievably admirable. And by the time I came around to be in his life and work at his company as a 14 or 15 year old, um, I got to learn from him and he was unbelievably generous in every sense of the word. Um, in the dead of winter, he would hand out sleeping bags and blankets to the, the men who were living homeless in downtown Indy. He would just give and give and give from his wealth um, that he had built through his company. And so I just admire the heck out of everything that he did for those around him. Like makes me teary. I just thinking about what he meant to me and getting to work at his company. I, I learned what it was like to to wear many entrepreneurial hats and watch him interact with people so respectfully. And it was the first job that I just got to do whatever the heck I wanted to contribute to the business. And I mean that in really great ways. So I did, as a 16 year old, I did bookkeeping for a multi-million dollar company. I then created an Excel file to manage all of their vendors. And this was in the late nineties when no one, you know, CRMs weren't even a thing at that point um, in a lot of small businesses. And then I got to negotiate contracts with vendors as an 18 year old. Like he just gave me an unbelievably long leash to learn things to contribute to his business. And I'm unbelievably grateful for everything that I learned from him. So that's my man. You go first, Dad. It's very easy. <clears throat> um, when I was about, uh, 19, I think it was, back in 1966, I'd got so fed up with all the feelings, the different mixture of feelings of gay and not gay and all the rest of it. And I said, I've got to sort myself out. And I asked my doctor, my local doctor, if he knew anyone who was good at psychology, etc. And he said, yes, I do, actually. And he put me in touch with the most wonderful person uh, professionally and socially that I'll ever meet, who uh, was, his name was actually uh, Ismond Rosen. He was from South Africa originally. And he became a very, he was actually a very famous, I didn't realize how famous, uh, psych, psych, well, he was a psychotherapist, psychoanalyst. Um, and I was with him for many years. And um, it was him in a way that, helped me to be able to just talk to that football team, for instance, years afterwards um, and discuss what was going wrong, etc. It was him that enabled me to talk to anyone about anything, to be honest. And I'll never forget him. He died sadly back in, uh, um, I think it was about 2002 or 2003, I can't remember. I should remember, but I don't want to remember. And um, so, uh, yeah, he had a most amazing effect on me. You should look him up, Ismond Rosen. Uh, oh, wow. And you'll find him in most of the books of anybody well known. And what about you, James? I'm struggling with that one, to be honest with you. I mean, there, there are people that I've, I've looked up to that have helped me. It's probably a combination. I mean, I definitely was affected by seeing how my mum dealt with her terminal illness. She just somehow raised herself to another level. You know, she didn't go, she, she could, people can easily go into depression when you know that there's no hope, but she, she retained her sense of humor and she stayed herself right up until the end. And that, I still use that as sort of a form of strength really to think, you know, when you're like that, you can, you know, mum can, can actually do that. I must have that in me as well. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I look up to, uh, I'm gonna have to mention Freddie, Freddie Mercury, uh, big Queen fan. But, you know, I think he, he's an interesting one because he came from a place that was completely alien and, and settled in Northwest London. 
Um, and he was a very introverted guy, funny enough. People don't realize it. Um, and he made his way, he navigated his way through and had that self-belief. And it's that self-belief that he had that I find amazing and became, you know, not only this, this star, but now an icon, really. Um, and he lived his life to the, to the fore. And I think living your life and making the most of every second, I think, is a really inspirational a way to way to way to think of it. And um, yeah, so maybe those are two people, Freddie and Freddie and my mom. They're really, they're really a, a a trio. Is that fair? Does that break the rules? Rules were made to be broken. So my grandfather Meyer, um, who came from Russia and out of violent uh, history in Russia at that time, and never again then would meet his brother who went on to live the rest of his life in Israel. Um, but my, my grandfather Meyer, who I write about, and his grocery store that started the business in Washington DC for the Zlotniks, um, and a, a real sinuous connection to then my sons, Jared and Tyler, who uh, honestly uh, teach me so much professionally and about life. Um, it is the lesson of my life to, to listen to them. They listened to me for a long time. I'm all ears now. So you asked me this right before we started. So I would have given a lot more thought to this because there's so many. Oh, my God, do I have to choose one? And I want to just share Mindy Holman who is the chairman of the board of the Holman organization. And she wrote the foreword to the book. She's a woman who is so magnificent and so humble in her, in the way that she operates. At one time I was having dinner with her and I said, Mindy, you, you know, you're a billionaire. You're the owner. You know, why, why would you need to, she's not a billionaire, but wealthy. And, and, but why do you need to work? You don't need to work. Why do you do this? And she said, Harry, she looked at me like, seriously. So to provide jobs and careers for people so that we can, provide great lives for them and we can earn money and give it away to help more people. Like, of course, Harry, what, don't, isn't that what, don't you understand? Like, oh my God, it was, she has inspired me because of who she is, how she is. And I want to be that way where I'm now at this age stage of life where I want to help more people. And so the money I make is mostly going to be given away and I'll provide jobs and opportunities for people. And um, do more good in the world, but that's a real person actually doing it, and um, such an inspiration to me. Uh, my wife, mm. my wife. Um, up until last five years, I was in the advertising business. Since that's where we met Joseph, and uh, I, I left when I had little kids um, to do. I went to a couple startups, and then after those were not working out, I didn't like them, and then I had to pivot and do something I wanted to do. And writing my book and started my upcoming podcast with something that my wife not only encouraged, but she continued to encourage uh, every time I get a job offer and my big massive ego wanted to take the job offer to get back into the world. Um, she's, she kept me on this path and she continues to this day to encourage me to do what I want to do, which is follow my passion. And, and uh, wow. yeah, my wife is my biggest champion there. All right, and we're very grateful that she uh, that she shares you with us uh, Monday through Friday. So we appreciate <laughs> that too as well. I'm going to pick someone that I've just always admired and looked up to since I was a little kid, and it's Johnny Cash. <laughs> and the reason Johnny Cash has been an inspiration to me is he's a damaged. He was a damaged man. He was not a perfect mm -hmm. soul, mm -hmm. and he struggled with his damaged uh, life with grit, with perseverance, uh, and his ability to always kind of stay true to himself. And I love the fact that he never really gave a shit about what people thought about him. Mm -hmm. And um, he was always the one person that if I could have sat down and had a beer with, it would have been it would have been him. So I know it's a random one out of left field, but but he's somebody who's always inspired. Uh, well, mine would have to be either Lady Di or Jackie mm -hmm. O. Wow. And only and and because they're both women who really suffered internally, right? But yet uh, externally, really, except for Lady Di. Uh, but Jackie O is always so elegant and so um, 
so focused on what she wanted after JFK died and she left, but but also she just exuded this elegance and uh, that I just loved. I loved. I still love. Anyway. So I would say my wife has definitely been an inspiration. Um, and then I'd go the the you know celebrity living your dad. I would say uh, just the way that that Jesus loved people and the way that he spread a message and collected people on a vision. Um, but most specifically for me personally is a guy named Bruce Martin and nobody's gonna know who he is, but I know. And he was a guy that stepped in my life during a, a time of great transition and spoke life into me and hope in me um, when I didn't have it for myself. And it completely transformed me and maybe who I am today. Phrase the question again. I've heard so many answers. I forget your exact phrasing. I, I, I'll make it easy. The answer is your wife. <laughs> By the way, because well, I was going to say Joseph Jaffe. So, oh no, no, no! I, 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 I wanted to, I wanted to be in order: Joseph Jaffe, your wife, Jesus, and Bruce Martin. That's right. right. All right. A, uh, a couple of other answers I would add is uh, as a guy who's my role model, Ralph Waldo Emerson, uh, the first American public philosopher who didn't just uh, lecture in classrooms, but all over the country to every kind of business and civic and church group, and tried to bring wisdom into people's lives. And and after him and all Jesus and my wife and you would be uh, Norman Lear, whom I got to know 30 years ago. And at a time in my life when I didn't have a lot of confidence that I could leave the classroom and make a difference for people, he really built up my confidence and showed me that a, a person with his media savvy really thought there was a place for wisdom in the world. So thanks for asking. 